Particle accelerators are complex and fascinating machines, and it might be surprising that there's about 35,000 of them in the world. And around half of those are used for one specific practical application, and that is treating cancer. The earliest mention of cancer dates back to 1600 BC, where the Edwin Smith papyrus describes the ailment. And for as long as humanity has suffered under it and known of it, we've also tried to cure it. The same papyrus outlines instructions on how to surgically remove a breast tumour. Over the following centuries, our knowledge and understanding grew, but it wasn't until 1895 when William Ronkin discovered X-rays that we got our first real modern breakthrough in cancer treatment. Ronkin used a cathode ray tube like this one, which has a vacuum inside the glass sphere and a cathode at one end, which when heated with high voltage gives out electrons, which would have been pulled towards the anode at the other end, and when it hits the anode, it generates X-rays. Within weeks of Röntgen's discovery, the damaging properties of X-rays were already being applied positively to treat cancer. X-rays kill cancer cells by damaging their DNA through the mechanism of ionisation. The X-ray photons carry enough energy to remove the electrons from water molecules. And when molecules lose one or more of their electrons, they become charged and highly chemically reactive. They bind to available DNA molecules nearby and attack both the bases and the backbone of DNA in the cancer cells. However, the X-ray beam doesn't differentiate between cancerous cells and healthy cells, so it's possible in a course of treatment to actually kill some of the healthy cells. These machines are incredibly precise, but getting the right dose distribution is really challenging because of the fundamental property of photons, that once X-ray photons go into the body, they'll keep on traveling and go out the other side. And one way to address this challenge is to use a different type of particle, say a heavy charge particle like a proton. And particle accelerators can take protons from inside the hydrogen atom, form them into high energy beams, and that can then be directed at a tumour inside the body. In a similar way to radiotherapy, the particle enters the body and hits the tumour. However, instead of passing through the body, it stops at its target. This happens due to a phenomenon called the Bragg peak. So if I was to plot the depth inside the human body, and when a fast-moving charged particle comes in, it comes in at high speed and loses energy gradually through ionisation until it stops at the end of its range. And the dose deposited when it does that starts quite low when it's at high speed. And as the particle decreases speed, it increases the dose it deposits until it stops at the end of its range. The higher the initial energy of the beam, the deeper that Bragg peak is inside the body. And that means that we can tune the energy of the beam to reach the exact depth of a tumour. The main benefit for proton therapy over conventional radiotherapy is that the dose to the surrounding healthy tissue is lower. And that's particularly useful for cancers which are deep inside the body or close to sensitive organs. And there are researchers around the world looking at ways to make this treatment even more effective by using heavier particles like carbon ions, or even increasing the dose delivered during a single treatment to the cancer cells while keeping the low dose in the surrounding tissue. From early x-rays in the 19th century to cutting edge proton beam treatments in the 21st century, particle accelerators have played a key role in our treatment of cancer. And while they're just one treatment modality, we're constantly working to make better, cheaper and more efficient accelerators to make sure that doctors have the best tools available.